So I'm doing the top end on this YZ250 and I'm going to check the piston clearance and the ring end gap. The first thing I do is I take the old piston and check the clearance. So I set my micrometer to the diameter of the piston near the bottom. Then I zero my dial bore gauge to the size of the piston. And then I come over here and I'm going to check what the difference is. It's called transfer measurement. So I am at four thou clearance right about there. I'm going to check the other way too. I'm going to do this top and bottom all over the place. I've got four and a half there. Now I've got my brand new piston here. Now I've set the micrometer to this new piston. Now I've zeroed my dial bore gauge to that new number. I could see the difference was about two and a half thou. So we're just over two thou. Now on top, just over two and a half here. Very nice. Now I know that the OEM piston clearance should be two to two and a half thou. So since I'm measuring off of a brand new piston, I know that the Nikasil has between half a thou and one thou of wear, which is entirely reasonable. So now I'm gonna check this ring end gap and I don't even have feeler gauges that are gonna be that big. That is like almost a millimeter. That's over 30 thou right there. So now I've got my new ring set up in there. It's looking much better. Now the new ring, and this is an OEM ring, is at 21 thou end gap. Now that's a lot more than I would like to see, but this is a carbureted bike. It's not nearly as picky as something like a TPI. With a TPI, I would not install this. Guys that build engines for motocross applications, they're probably like, hey, 21 thou, that's good. This being a woods bike, it's not ideal, but because it's carbureted, it'll work.